How do you sleep at night? For many, it's on the cold, dark streets. And we're asking the government to work with us to end rough sleeping in Redbridge for good. The last two years have been hard for everyone. The pandemic hit people's livelihoods and impacted mental well-being. And these challenges are now being compounded by the snowballing cost of living crisis, spiking inflation and soaring energy bills throughout the coldest months of the year. This has been tough for all of us, but it's been particularly hard for people who find themselves homeless and living on the streets. At the height of the pandemic, the government worked with councils and the voluntary sector to make sure that all rough sleepers could have a roof over their head through the Everyone In programme. In Redbridge, we went above and beyond to ensure all rough sleepers, including those whose insecure immigration status meant they were not entitled to public funds, got the help they needed. Malachi Place, Redbridge Council, working with the Salvation Army to deliver homes for those who were sleeping rough. So we're in um, Malachi Place where 42 rooms are offering hope, warm beds to people who would otherwise have been sleeping rough on the streets. And of course, 15 of those beds are for people with no recourse to public funds, who have nowhere to go, literally nothing here with them. So this is, this is the kind of room that these people will stay in. Well, this is warm, this is, this is home. I mean, the opposite to this is sleeping rough on a mattress, if you're lucky, or on a, in a cardboard box on the street. And here we have a comfortable bed. And uh, the, the feedback that we've got from clients is from having nothing, you know, being in the streets in winters, to come to this is so luxurious. It feels like a home. And that's important, uh, you know, where people are felt made to feel welcomed, uh, you know, and when we work in a personalised manner, we don't work as per our support needs. We work as per what the clients need. Yeah. Um, and I think that is important for people to engage uh, and, and move on positively. Absolutely. Okay. So this is the Recycles Workshop. So what goes on in here? So um, the plan is it's a social enterprise uh -huh. uh, where we look at sales, um, repairs. Um, so is it the rough sleepers who are doing the repairs? So the, the plan is to integrate a program where we, we train rough sleepers uh, to, to move on to something that's more permanent in terms of employment because Malachi Place or Recycles is a stepping stone. It's not a permanent place. So we have to equip the clients with tools to, to, to manage once they settle in the community. And this is one avenue where, they, yes, they can gain a qualification and a credit course and then move on to something more permanent. And that's employment and which steadies you know, uh, life in, in, in the community. Fantastic. So we take the rough sleepers off the streets, give them a warm bed, and then give them the skills for life, hopefully to be able to stand on their own two feet and get back into society on their own two feet. The critical work is now being undone by government changes to immigration rules coming into effect from 1st of April. The rule changes mean our council cannot support people with no recourse to public funds. In effect, this will mean more than 50 local people will have no choice but to return to the streets. The changes will also require local authorities to report any rough sleepers with no recourse to public funds to government agencies. The government changes do not protect these vulnerable people. They directly target them. The rules make homelessness a reason for visas to be cancelled, leading to immigration detention, even deportation. Uh, so Ramfell is an organisation that works with refugees and asylum seekers um, as well as people who are having difficulties with their immigration. So a lot is being done to deny people status, to deny people access to services, which is meant to be in, in the good of the, the British public to save money, uh, to protect immigration roles. But what we're seeing is an awful lot of suffering for, for individuals, uh, but also that it's, it's not really you know, working. Uh, and uh, this current project that we have, the Rough Sleeping Initiative, is designed to end rough sleeping by, I believe, 2024. And so there needs to be some action 
uh, taken, uh, especially as councils who have been supporting people through the pandemic let people go, uh, the, the risk of, 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 of seeing a, a lot of rough sleeping deaths is very high. He's saying when he came here, it was okay. He used to work and earn money and, you know, he used to afford accommodation and everything. But since um, he wasn't feeling well, he's been homeless. Um, he had a prostate cancer. His health is getting down day by day. And uh, it's very difficult for him to be like this without any money or anything. Hmm. He said it's not a good life he's living. Yeah, he's saying you can imagine when you sleep on the road alone, without your family, without anybody, how do you feel? You tell me. So obviously depressed. He said they helped him a lot. A year and a half he's been living here in Rydale Night Shelter and uh, he said he, he used to get every support, food, clothing, everything. And it was like living with the family. But now he's in TA because this is closing down. So he feels alone and depressed. Yeah, before I got here, uh, I stayed about a year on the streets here. Yeah. Terrific, no? Can't get used to it. Cold, always cold. Even in the summer, it's cold, so not comfortable. Is it dangerous? Oh, very dangerous, yeah. I've been threatened a few times, and I changed completely in the last two, three years. Uh, friends, family, they don't recognize me. They said, you're completely different. It, it, it killed me a lot, yeah. Do you think you can get back to how you were? Uh, I hope so. Yeah. I'm trying, yeah. But at the moment in Redbridge, one of the biggest issues that we're facing in terms of our rough sleepers is our NRPF cohort. We have over 77 NRPF rough sleepers. This means that a lot of those rough sleepers cannot enjoy sites like this and cannot actually get into supported housing because they have no recourse to public funds. They end up um, with no kind of long-term future in terms of how we can support them. And I just think, you know, that's something we've got to do something about or else we'll just see a massive return to the streets um, when the pandemic's over. Yeah, it's, it's, it's such a shame that we can't offer it to everyone. And like you said, it's, there's such a need for supported accommodation services, whether people have recourse or not. People still have have needs that that need that wraparound intensive support that services like that, this can give. Did you sleep out on the street? Yeah. 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 How was it on the street? How about, how about, yes. Is this better? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. Do you do you want to just show us around the flat a little bit and show us the bathroom and that kind of thing? Because big room, I have kitchen. I can make food. You've been cooking, I can smell. Yeah, cooking. <laughs> you make a lot of soup, don't you? So, are, are you happy? Um, I'm being... happy, very happy. Yeah. Very happy. Good. That's really nice to hear. Yeah. We're asking the government to take five simple steps to end rough sleeping for good. The government must continue to fund emergency accommodation and support until immigration status is resolved and allow rough sleepers to claim local housing allowance and welfare benefits to keep them safe off the streets. The government must allow people with no recourse to public funds to access education, employment and training so they can have the opportunity to build better lives. The government must reduce the amount of evidence rough sleepers have to provide to prove how long they have lived in the UK. The current level of evidence is an insurmountable obstacle for people in desperate need of support. The government must reverse the 20-year rule back to the 14-year rule. So people with insecure immigration status who have lived in the UK continuously for 14 years can apply for limited leave to remain. 
This step alone would resolve most cases in Redbridge. And finally, the government must commit to working with local councils to solve the real cases we're dealing with and use our processes in Redbridge as best practice. When you're out there, it's, you're, you're trying to cope and you're just down, emotional, depressed. I do suffer with anxiety and depression anyway, but um, that is, it's helped. I didn't know I had that until I came here. No, but since, well, since I've been here, they've, they've got, um, helped me get my birth certificate. They sort my universal credit out for me. Um, they've, they've asked, they asked me, obviously, um, what services I need. So they've sorted all that out for me. They, like Everything that I needed help with, has, that's been given to me. The support with the staff, that's all I need at the moment is them. <laughs> and they've given that to me as well. Any help I needed, any help, they've been there for me. So that's good. I've, I've got my personal issues, but I've, I think I've come a long way from when I was on the streets. In 2018, 10 rough sleepers died on the streets of Redbridge. We must work together to stop this tragedy from ever happening again. That's why we're calling on the government to work with us to end rough sleeping for good.